CataractCoach.com. Flip and chop with a white cataract. Yes, this is a great technique even for a dense white nucleus. Well, for an experienced surgeon. This is not for newbies. Let me show you. You can see there's a beautiful five to five and a half millimeter excess. High rest action, slow and steady, gentle, gentle, gentle. Then the nucleus comes up and you use that cannula to help kind of push that nucleus around. There it is. You see one pole came up, go through the side port here, and let's like lift this nucleus a little bit more out of the bag even. There you go. Now, a small aliquot of dispersive viscosity to recoat that central endothelial cells for the cornea, protect that cornea. Phaco probe going in the eye. The key here is you've trapped the nucleus between the phaco probe and the chopper. So probe goes in the eye, high vacuum, higher flow settings, get a good amount of power in there too, buzz in the center, vacuum power to hold it, but now the nucleus is trapped. Look at the chopper, placing it behind the posterior plate of the nucleus, and then we try to split it. Pretty dense cataract, didn't even split fully the first time. Let's try again. Buzz in again to the nucleus, get a good grip there, chopper around it, and then the chopper goes to the back posterior plate of the nucleus. Position it appropriately. There we go. Be careful of the capsule. And now look at this chop. Ooh, that's a good chop. Good nuclear density. So you're saying, wait a minute, a white cataract like this, this patient can't have a cleared cornea the next day. I promise it's a cleared cornea. Watch this. Now we're using phaco power modulation to minimize the phaco energy. So that means for here, a, a pulse mode with a low duty cycle, like, you know, 30, 40% at most. And look how we're just buzzing the nucleus, chop, chop, and more chop, and we keep creating these small little fragments. Now, once you have a bunch of these small fragments, we can take our time and emulsify them, and they come out of the eye very easily. We're not riding up against the coronal endothelium. We're operating it about the iris plane and aiming down towards the capsular bag. So we can hear buzzing the nucleus, chopper goes around, but the advantage here is this gives you direct access to that posterior plate of the nucleus. And as we know in these denser cataracts like this one, that posterior plate can be more fibrous and tough to split. If you're operating only from the front, let's say you're doing a groove down the middle and then dividing it like a stop and chop or divide and conquer, you know you get that deep groove and even then the pieces don't want to split. So here we're directly attacking that posterior surface breaking that posterior plate, and look at that nucleus already cut up into a lot of small little pieces. These are going to be relatively easy to emulsify. We'll take our time here. Video shown here real time, so it's a little bit of a longer case. We didn't catch the beginning of the video here because my uh, technician in the operating room didn't hit record until we were already kind of get the rexes done, but you saw the important points here. So buzz into the nucleus, there it is. And if you need to, you can sub-chop it, but these are not dense. Uh, it's so dense that you can't uh, emulsify them. So we'll emulsify here, taking our time. Now, you keep an eye on the total amount of energy you're putting in the eye. Maybe it's time to recoat the endonucleus, right? Or the endothelial cells, pardon me. So you've got a remaining endonucleus in the bag. We've got to recoat the endothelial cells. There's more dispersive viscosity to protect the coronal endothelium. And again, that's going to make sure these cells are nice and happy and you get a clear cornea post-op day one. So again, now we've recoded the endothelium. We're operating underneath that protection of viscoelastic, slowly emulsifying these pieces. Now remember, not a whole lot of cortex remains in these eyes. And so once we get the last couple nuclear pieces, nothing's really weighing down the capsular bag, right? So as a result, I don't want the posterior capsule to come forward. So what we'll do is get these pieces out. But as we do that, we'll keep that soft, the chopper in the safe position. Safe position means that blunt, smooth back end of the chopper is towards the capsule. So just in case the capsule decides to come forward, it doesn't hit the phaco tip or phaco probe. So here's that last piece coming up nice and easy. Get this last. That looks pretty darn good. That looks beautiful. Let's come on out. Fantastic. Hey, let me tell you about our sister channel, RetinaRounds.com, an amazing resource for cataract surgeons like you and me. Yes, for cataract surgeons, you should definitely be watching RetinaRounds. You want to be the best surgeon possible, right? Though you got to learn. You got to put the effort in. Now we're going to do some cortex removal here. We'll get the eye probe. Let's take a look inside the eye. And not a whole lot of cortex remaining. We'll clean that up pretty easily here. Now, this technique, flip and chop, it's not for new surgeons. If you're a beginning surgeon, if you've done less than 1,000 phacos, and you know who you are. Don't do this. You need to first learn divide and conquer. You need to learn stop and chop. You need to learn horizontal chop. You need to learn vertical chop. Do all those first and then come and learn flip and chop. Flip and chop, the big advantage here is we're operating away from the capsule bag. Another advantage is we can access the dense posterior plate, the thickened leathery posterior plate of the nucleus. And the third thing is, you know, it's actually less stress on zonular apparatus. We're not operating in the capsule bag. We're not fully in the bag. We're only partially in the bag. So it's a fantastic technique. 
And I can personally attest that it is very good for all kinds of techniques. I've had so many videos because I get emails. People say, well, I like that flippin' chop, but it was a soft nuke because it's not good for a dense cataract. Okay, let me show you a dense cataract. Oh, but it's not good for a white cat. Here's a white cataract. I promise you it's good. The hands are more important, right? If you've got fantastic hands, you can use any technique you want, and including this flip and chop. So here we go. Now, I don't do flip and chop for every case. I promise I don't. I sometimes, today, this is, uh, this morning, I did surgery. I did some patients who were just vertical chop, horizontal chop. I had one very tiny eye, nanophthalmic eye with a shallow anterior chamber. I did a stop and chop and made a double wide groove to debulk that nucleus to give me more operating room, right? Think about it. So we obviously, I want you to tailor the technique to the patient. And if you haven't learned the basic techniques, don't worry about this yet. This is not for newbies. Sorry, I gotta be honest with you here. Now you can see there's the rexus, six millimeter optics, so probably a little bit bigger than a five millimeter rexus, maybe 5.2 or three, somewhere in that range. Pretty good, right? Let's hydrate up the incision up and seal this up. Now sometimes you notice a little bit of, of smudgy stuff on the posterior capsule. Sometimes you can't get all that off in these white cataracts, and that's okay. That's no big deal. At this point, the patient's going to be, I assure you, amazed on post-op day one. With a clear cornea, the patient's going from, the, you know, light perception vision to the next day, you're going to have clear vision. The patient's going to be really happy. Now, I'm going back to the eye probe. Boy, I think there's some viscoelastic I gave you out there. Yeah, clean up some of that viscoelastic. Now, you may be tempted to go behind that optic and get some of that other lens material there, that little... The filamentous stuff. Let's try. Can I get any of it? I'll try my best. Yeah, maybe a little bit. But again, then what's the balance here? The balance here is don't break the bag, right? Think about that. The lens is already in the bag. And you know that saying? There's a saying we have here, certainly in the USA train, medical training, where perfection is the enemy of very good. You can have a very good case. And you go there trying to make it a perfect case. And then next thing you know, you have a complication. So you don't want that. But here again, hiring up the incisions, Sealing them up. Look at that. Beautiful looking incisions, by the way. And let's see what else we got here. Just uh, making sure there's nothing else in the eye. That looks good. Looking good centration on the eye. Well, showing the case in real time. You guys want to show, see these complete cataract cases. These are unedited. Here's a little Triumph Sentinel, preservative-free, about 0 0.5 milligrams. Remember, preservative-free in the enter chamber. Now, a little bit of um, myostat, which is carbocol. We dilute this 1 to 10, so I don't use full strength. Only 10% strength. And then finally, a small aliquot of moxifloxacin, preservative-free. That's for endophthalmitis prophylaxis. Where's that moxifloxacin? And there it is. And then at the end here, we're going to do a small LRI or limbal relaxing incision. Check the pressure. Pressure of the eye looks pretty good. Maybe let's, yeah, let's drop it a little bit. And now we'll do a little LRI here. First, before we do the LRI, let's get the tetracaine on a sponge just to make sure the oxygen is nice and numb. I want this patient comfortable. This is topical anesthesia only. There is no block here. And we'll put our fixation ring down and do a little bit of a treatment for the astigmatism. Maybe about a half to maybe even less. Looking good. Fantastic case. Remember, try out Flip and Chop. If you want to see more, you know, you go to cataractcoach.com, the website, not just YouTube, my friend. And you'll be able to see so many, so many videos about Flip and Chop. And you can learn it. If you're old enough, no bit, no newbies there. Remember that. Anyway, check out rednerounds.com or center channel. I promise you're gonna love it.